there was no legal or de facto control or influence from Mike in the movie. The agreement from the beginning was that I would control every frame of the film or else I really wouldn't have been able to do it. I come from a really poverty struck an area and then when I came to live with Cuff, they live in a 14 room Victorian mansion. And I first come here, I said, wow, I could rob these white guys, but they ain't hip. Not thinking, I'm not, I'm not knowing this guy been around the world a bunch of times. I never knew he was like me. He was from a bad neighborhood. He was a street kid like me. And then one day he used to say, listen, you have the chance to change your life, your family's life. You could be something very special. Don't you want to be champion? You could be champion of the world. And I, I didn't pay no attention to it. He said, really? You could be champion of the world. You could devastate the world. No man could take what you do. It's got to believe it. I looked at this guy, and then I started thinking. I said, you really? I said, this guy's really crazy. Mike visited the set of the pickup artist in 1985, and we hit it off immediately. He was there to meet Robert Downey, but he and I ended up walking through Central Park alone that night. And when we broke, when we wrapped, which was about four or five in the morning, he and I walked through the park and engaged in a conversation about all of the subjects near and dear to our hearts, sex, love, madness, crime, death, and boxing. This movie, Tyson, came about as the result of um, several years, probably a decade of anticipation. We had done black and white together in 1998, 1999, 1999, I think, and what happened in the course of that movie was that close to the middle of the movie, there's a scene with Mike and Power of Wu-Tang Clan comes to ask him whether he should murder somebody or not. And the way Mike responded to that question, I said if he could do a whole movie like this and I could come up with a format for it, a structure, it could really have something fascinating. And what it became was a split-screen, multiple-voice, aesthetically charged movie that gave him the forum in which to reveal himself. After the fight, I was just so, um, man, I was just so delayed. I just, I didn't know what to do. I just knew Cuss would have been proud of he was there to watch me win the championship. It was something that we always talked about. And I'd like to dedicate my fight to my great guardian, Cuss model, And I'm, I'm sure he's up there and he's looking and he's talking to all the great fighters and saying his boy did it. I wore the championship belt for probably at least three weeks. Uh -huh. Even when I went to the store, I just wore it around my waist. I was just very proud. I actually look at uh, Tyson as not just a biographical portrait of Mike Tyson, but in some bizarre way as an autobiographical portrait. There are obviously extreme dissimilarities, but there's also a sense, very powerful sense, that I have of him as a version of me or me as a version of him. And I watch the movie with great intensity and rapt curiosity, not just to learn about him, but to learn about myself. He refers to it as the temper of an extremist and says nobody who is, who is not an extremist can understand the mind of an extremist, someone who constantly feels driven to go to a height or a depth but doesn't know how to live in between. That would be the fundamental unifying force. Well, I'm glad that Brett has this new imprint, Rat Press. He has uh, interviews with Bob Evans, interviews with Marlon Brando, and Jim, the author's self-centered memoir on the great Jim Brown by James Toback. And um, it's great to see it back in print. I did an introduction in which I said it was like meeting an old lost son from 30 years ago. and. Uh, expressing great admiration for the, some, of the, some of the things he's done and criticism for some of the things he's done. But the book overall presents this odd relationship between this white guy, James Toback, and Jim Brown, who was the icon in the black world at the time. So I guess there's a clear parallel now, um, except that I'm a lot older. Mike is about seven years older than Jim when I did the book, but I'm now 30 years older than when I did the book about Jim. So I have a different age relationship to Mike Tyson. I'm a lot older than Mike. I'm a, almost old enough to be Mike's father, where I was a bit younger than Jim. But, but I do feel a real, um, there is a real parallel there because both of them were substantial, fascinating, 
tremendously successful, uniquely successful, great athletes and stars. And um, I have been sort of on my own channel of, um, of um, the self-discovery. And uh, I've discovered a lot about myself through each of them. And I think perhaps that's gone both ways.